Hey guys, David here. So I'm going to do a review on this reel that I've been using for about a month and a half for cart fishing. Um, it is the Daiwa Black Widow Bite and Run 4500A. Um, 89 bucks. I'm not going to go through all the um, specs on it, like the line capacities, because you could look it up online. Um, so I'm going to start off way at the beginning when I was looking for reel for cart fishing. So um, I originally tried a reel with just the top drag on it. Um, I kept missing fish. I couldn't get I couldn't get the reel tight the uh, top drag tightened down quick enough running from far away. So um, went to a bait a bait runner. So I looked at a couple different bait runners. There is a Shimano. I think it was a six thousand OC um, Daiwa MCast. Um, there's a couple other ones. So those are the ones that I remember that I was looking at. So the reason why I picked this uh, Daiwa Black Widow 4500 was because of the price. It was 89 bucks. You can't really beat that. Um, it was readily available. I don't think people really know that it's out there. So it was plenty in stock. And yeah, it's cheap. I mean, just want to try it. Daiwa, I've been using Daiwa products for a while. So all right, I'm going to work my way through from top to bottom on this thing to just show you what's going on with it, So, or at least my thoughts on it. So first off, I'm going to tell you how it was during that month and a half that I fished with it. So I used it every week for a month and a half for a minimum of three days a week for a carp, mainly catfish, and... Um, Another reason why I got this reel is to possibly use it for stripers and some light saltwater fishing. Um, so in the Connecticut River where I used it for that month and a half, it's fallen in the water several times. This particular one, I have two of them. Um, fallen in the water several times. I got a lot of silt, a lot of sand in it. Um, I had an issue with a snowmobile the last time I went out. So this particular incidents that happened there was this guy on a snowmobile doing at least 40 or 50 miles an hour across the top of the water he drove through both lines both the Daiwa Black Widow lines um, and before I could blink an eye and run to the rods half the line was gone off the spool that's how fast he was going and I thought for certain these this reel in my hand especially was um, toast I thought the drag would be toast um, and then it was fine after the first time, and then a second time, same guy in the snowmobile drove through it, going faster. He's probably doing 50 miles an hour on the top of the water. Same idiot, drove through it again, stripped a bunch of line off of it. And I was like, all right, that's definitely it, because the way this thing was screaming, I was like, there's no way that thing's going to ever sound the same or possibly even reel the same anymore. But it survived, so it's a testament to the quality of this reel, even though it's only 89 bucks. So, all right, top to bottom. All right, get the drag knob on top. So a lot of people complain about the feel of these top drag knobs and that type of thing. I can't complain. It's plastic. Whatever. Um, like I said, for the price point, 89 bucks, you'd be sort of crazy to complain about plastic on the top of a reel like this, you're nuts. Um, so I have ripped apart this reel from top to bottom, so I know what the insides are like for the most part. Um, so starting at the cap, nothing special there at all. Um, with any reel, you need to clean it, period. So especially if they fall in the water, you should be cleaning them it went as soon as you have a chance. So. Up here you have the drag washers, um, the drag assembly up here. So it has, um, you see how it has that little clip, I'm going to call it a sir clip right there. Um, when I took this apart I found it a little bit odd that there was so much, I don't know if you can see that, a lot of wiggle, wiggle worm in this drag. Um, I have a bunch of Shimano's, other dye was <clears throat> some pens, I hate pens by the way. Um, and they didn't have as much play in this top piece as this thing does, but the engineers that made this know more than I do, so works good. Um, so this little piece right here is what actually makes the sound when the 
spools turning under, when it's under stress. So um, at first it was really quiet when I was fighting a fish. I know that's an important pit thing for some people, and it is pretty cool. So it's sort of important for me. So when I first got it, it was nowhere as loud as that. So to remedy that and make it a little bit louder, um, I just cleaned a little bit of the grease off of it and put some um, oil on it. That's it. Let me slide this back on. Um, just put the cap on. I'm, on. I'm recording something. Recording something. What? Recording something. Um, let me just get this on straight. Alright, so that's all. Um, yeah, that's it. Holds plenty of line. I think I have, this is 20 pound Power Pro I have on there, and there's over 300 yards on there. Um, let's see, line lay is pretty good. Nice tight pattern on it. You can see it's pretty flat. That's, like I said, month and a half of use. Um, the bale is nice and has a nice click to it. Um, it knows where it wants to go as opposed to I have a couple Shimano's that aren't as um, definite, or I'm going to call it when they close. That's a nice little thunk. Um, this roller right here has, it's not, <clears throat> it's not the best of clearances, so there is a little bit of wiggle room in this roller right here. So um, when this thing, thing did fall in the water a couple times, a lot of silt, it wasn't just a little bit, it was a lot of silt and sand granules in there, which means there's space for that to happen. Um, let's see, where, oh, when I took this apart, you have to be careful if you maintenance your own reels that there's this long spring, it's about an inch and a quarter, that goes from here to here, and on top of it there's a little cube of plastic that has a notch in it to hold another spring, so there's actually two rod, uh, there's actually a rod going right here, and then there's a spring that's probably half an inch long it tucks underneath here so when you open this the thing wants to shoot out so if you're gonna maintenance this thing just be ready and put your hand over it or <clears throat> work in a space where it's not gonna get lost if it does shoot off and yeah, when it fell it fell in the water like i said this reel fell in the water a couple times there wasn't a ton of silt in there but there was some so this is one of the better sealed parts on there let's see working my way down so the rotor has no play in it whatsoever. Um, better than some of the other reels <clears throat> I've held and tried out in this price range, so very solid. Um, the spool itself, once it's tightened down, I spoke about the drag assembly being having a lot of play in it, but surprisingly when this is tightened down, this isn't tightened down all the way, by the way, um, the spool does not have a ton of play in it. And then you have the switch to reverse the reel. And then it has, um, like most reels have nowadays, the infinite, the anti-reverse, and it's inst it really is instant. There's no lag in it when it want when you try and get it to go backwards. Um, let's see. <clears throat> There's the lever to engage the bait runner. So down is to allow the line to run out. And it's nice and smooth, it's not notchy or anything like that. Um, and then, oh yeah, speaking of drags, so when you're fighting a fish, this is buttery smooth. It is not, it's not notchy, it's not inconsistent with tension throughout the rotations of it, it's really good. Um, so the bottom assembly where all the action happens with the bait runner, so to I was trying to figure out how to get into this. I didn't read the manual, but um, figured it out. Like I said, I took this thing apart from top to bottom. So to take this cap off, there's this tension spring right here. I'm going to call it a circlip, I think. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But pop that off with like a little watch screwdriver. You stuff it in there, and that'll open. And then this will just slide right off. And this area right here collected a lot of silt and um, <clears throat> I couldn't even turn the, the turn the knob on this 
really at all, didn't make any noise like it does now. Um, but it was really easy to fix, so don't be put off by that. <coughs> now we'll keep saying you need to maintenance your reels, no matter how cheap they are, if you want to keep them for any amount of time. So um, I got it back to its silky smoothness. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with down there. Yeah, that's really it. Um, nothing special going on there. I'm just going over those parts and bits that are of note to me. Um, the knob, they could have put a little bit better of a knob on there, a bigger like power knob style, like a full sphere on there would be nice. But yeah, that is really it, guys. So I don't regret buying this thing. It was 89 bucks. Um, use it for stripers, carp, catfish, whatever. You you really can't go wrong with this thing. It's a beautiful little reel. It feels it feels plasticky, but you're crazy if you complain f about that in a reel for eighty nine bucks. So um, I believe the step up from this is the Daiwa MCast, and I believe there's a little more metal product on there. So all right, guys, if you like this video, please give a like and subscribe.